Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to dive into attribution and why executives should care about attribution. Now attribution is quite a bit of a technical topic, um, but there is a lot of data in there that's very important if you're managing a company, if you run a company, if you're an executive. So let's dive into that. And with me on the show, I have David Saxon. He's the CEO of attribution at attributionapp.com. He has extensive sales, digital, and partner development experience with over 20 years in his career, and he's the perfect person today to talk to. So let's welcome David to the show. Hi, David. How are you today? Doing great. Thanks for having me here, Klaus. David, how would you explain what attribution is to someone who has just started in e-commerce and digital marketing? So attribution is really just uh, taking the money that you spend in acquiring new customers and really attributing it to those activities and what resulted in a sale for the customer uh, or the brand in general. So, and it's truly just measuring the impact of that. And most people refer to it as return on ad spend and just better understanding what channels attributed the most to that sale or that service that companies have sold. Mm -hmm. I think that's where the secret lies in finding out where your return on ad spend comes from, your return on investment comes from. Now, there's many, many platforms out there. All they have some kind of attribution in there. It never matches up. It's a complete mess for most of us marketers. Now, running a company, obviously, you want a hard facts. You want to really know what are the numbers. Are we spending money on the right marketing channel or can we even scale? What's your experience in the landscape right now? Maybe looking in the last three to five years, what has happened? Why is attribution so complicated? Yeah, that's a great question. You bring up a very good point. There is so many different uh, and, and companies out there that have attribution models. And, and uh, to a testament to it, like even in the G2 reports, some of the companies that are listed very high in the G2 reports do have attribution, but it's it's unfortunately the attribution is such a broad term that it gets incorporated into a lot of these different products and services companies have. But truly doing attribution is really connecting to all those different ad platforms that companies are using. And most of them are using primarily, you know, the likes of Google and Meta, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. Uh, and tying it in with, uh, you know, the conversion event with some revenue uh, attribute and really kind of having a better insights of the models and everything all together collectively on there. So it's challenging across the board. It's still continued to be challenging because, number one, I think customers' data, uh, there's data challenges and the different systems that customers use. Uh, there's challenges and in, in potentially on the platforms that they're uh, built on and uh, and there's also challenges in the resources. Uh, I think depending on the marketing people and the level and the competence and what they have done, there's varying degrees of their understanding of you know data and marketing and how it fills into the whole space, right? Mm -hmm. Now looking into attribution from a technical aspect, there is different points where attribution actually can be measured and. You need to streamline that. And I know that you have a solution to do so. What's your approach to level out the data that it actually makes sense to compare it with each other so that you don't compare or that you compare apples with apples at the end of the day? Yeah, yeah. Great question. So, uh, you know, our philosophy is, uh, is it in the platform that we uh, support for our customers, it's, it's a click-based attribution model, right? Uh, there's definitely value in that companies spend a lot to get brand awareness and impression data and everything. Uh, but when it comes to uh, really understanding what's working, what's not, we view basically the best way to approach this is to have data that you can audit and it's something that you uh, can present to a CFO or CEO who's asking you, it's like, hey, how is our return on ad spend? And do you have data to back it up? So for us, our true belief in the attribution modeling that we do across uh, for our customers is all based on that auditability of the data and the first party data that we collect for our customers that they can attribute to it. Uh, so as it relates to that and connecting all that together and giving the visibility into the people's views and the visits and what they're doing, and it can be very complex and consuming to tie all that stuff together, but we bring that into a very structured environment where our customers get the big, best insights that they want 
as it relates to, you know, better understanding which channels are performing and which channels are, uh, you know, are maybe underperforming, right? And I'll give you a great example of, uh, you know, some of the insights some of our customers have seen. Most of the platforms do have their own reporting capabilities, uh, but why customers come to us and where they choose any type of attribution solution is like, hey, we want we want a single sort of truth and we want to bring all this stuff together. Uh, so we are bringing in cost data from those platforms, uh, but we're not going to depend on the conversion data because we'll track that with our customers on our own as it relates into that. And with Shopify, we can easily plug into those, uh, plug and get someone set it set up and running fairly quickly who has a Shopify account and running on the Shopify uh, platform. But we can truly see once we have all that connectivity into all those different channels, uh, the ability to understand if people are clicking on the ads and they're coming through and doing some type of event. So we have, it's very eye-opening for some of our customers. They find out that some of the ad platforms, it's like nobody's clicking on the ads and coming through, but some of those platforms are telling them they are having all these conversions. Now, uh, with us, you can audit all that and track it through. If you're asking that from some of the platforms, you know, obviously it's there, it's a black box and, you know, they don't provide that data to you. Uh, and again, going back to the impressions and, and the value of that, there's true value in brand awareness as it up levels to those customers and uh, those companies trying to get their message out there. It's hard to measure it, uh, but it just gives our customers uh, a better understanding of like, hey, what's working, what's not. And if people aren't clicking on the ads, that should give you some insights as a brand to like, maybe there's the messaging's wrong. Maybe we should have different copy. Maybe there's something else that we're doing that we can improve to get those clicks to come through to the website to take some action, right? Mm -hmm. I think a very important thing that you measure uh, said is that um, the platforms, let it be Google, let it be Meta, everyone wants to claim the conversion, whatever the conversion is, because obviously then you're spending more money on their platform. But you're right. Most of the time, the conversion is coming from somewhere else and they claim it and then you're sort of lost and do not really work. Give me the idea on um, attribution models or conversions that you can measure. It not, does not necessarily be always the sale that you measure. There's other points, data points you measure. Give me just an overview of what KPIs our executives are looking for. We support five different uh, multi-touch models. Uh, well, three different multi-touch and, and, and two single touch. So we do first touch or last touch. And then we do position-based, time decay, and linear uh, models in the platform. And the beauty of how we collect and, and store the data for our customers, you can switch between those different models. Uh, most of our customers typically start out with linear, which gives equal touch points to all, equal credit to all the different touch points. And then over time, they'll look at this uh, at more of a position base, which is you know more of a U shape. They can give like heavier credit to the first touch, heavier credit to the last touch, and equal credit to the touches in between. Uh, so it's almost like a journey when people start to kind of like go through that process of like when they start to really get into the attribution, really looking at linear, then eventually switching to position-based. Uh, but all those different models could be, uh, we cover and aggregate all together. And the beautiful thing about it is as companies are using our platform over time, they can go back historically after we've uh, collected this data for them and look at all the different models and see what's to be what seems to be working, they can look at the different channels to see what's better with the first touch or last touch or multi-touch. Uh, and they can make their decisions based upon that. It's really providing them with this much clarity and transparency of what's working and what's not and where to best invest. Mm -hmm. I want to dive a little bit into the day-to-day -day life of a marketeer, of someone who runs an e-commerce business. Um, as we're on a podcast, it's always difficult to, to see what's actually in front of you. Can you talk me through the dashboard? What will I have in front of me if I'm working on your platform? You know, there's definitely charts and reports uh, that we do cover. I would say most of the stuff is just aggregating a single point of like, you know, seeing where my return on, how much I'm spending in the channels that we're measuring and what's my click through or conversions and what's my, what's my return on ad spend. Uh, as as a whole. And then clicking through into that, people can break it down and go into the individual uh, details. And we do support 
ABM models as well, so we can aggregate and roll up all the different uh, users into one specific company for companies that are B2B. But on the B2C side, you can see all those conversions and the journey path individually, what that is. Uh, but I think like most analytics platforms or the tools that are out there, uh, people come and take a high level and then they can start digging into, maybe they just launched a new Facebook campaign and they wanted to drill in to see how that's comparing. And you can drill all the way down into the different levels uh, and the granularity. As an example, in Google, we can go down to the campaign level, then to the keyword level. And you can look at all the how those campaigns are uh, performing across the board in, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Mm -hmm. Can you give an example of one of your clients, what kind of results they saw after they implemented your solution? Yeah, I think the the biggest of results that people see from a macro sense, uh, and I'll give a couple examples to some specific companies, but the macro sense is just not, uh, most companies that are measuring are just really dependent on the ad platforms telling them what's working and what's not, right? Uh, so I think it gives them better clarity and understanding exactly, okay, I have a true, true model or I have true traffic that I know people are coming in through these channels to the website and they're converting and I'm able to kind of like get everything into one platform and take a look at it. Uh, and I think from that, most people are really started, uh, seem to be very uh, eye opening of just like the fact that it's like, oh, you, you know, some people didn't even know that, you know, they didn't have any click, click through conversions on certain platforms or certain keywords and really starting to understand the, the level of, you know, how can I start spending money more wisely or where can I shift money to uh, spend money in different channels? Or more importantly, it's like, hey, let's run an AB, AB campaigns on certain areas where it seems like things are a little bit uh, not performing or underperforming or other channels that I want to invest in. So at the end of the day, it really just provides more higher, you know, a, a deeper level of clarity for companies to really dig into things. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the implementation, the onboarding process. Do I need to do any kind of homework? What are the different steps before I can get up, up and running? Well, the great thing with uh, Shopify customers, uh, it's very simple to get up and running. Literally, it could be like as much as clicking through, connecting to the Shopify, uh, Shopify Plus account, and then it's just going in and authenticating the channel. So if you're doing Facebook or Google or whatever channels that you're using, going in with your credentials, authenticating, and then you're up and running. So it's pretty straightforward. And even for the customers that don't have Shopify uh, and more custom kind of connectors that we got to connect with, typically at the most, it could take anywhere from like seven to 14 days to get up and running where we can really start to do some analysis and and look into the attribution. But Shopify is probably the easiest that gets people up and running fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good news. Tell me about, about the, are there any kind of myths out there right now about attribution? Because there's a lot of things going on with third-party cookies go and th going away and a lot of, I think, false information is floating around. What's the thing that you hear the most, which is probably not true? Yeah, that's that's a great point. Well, it's interesting. Like we get often asked about third party cookies, and to us, we we've been a first party data system uh, since an, our inception. So it really doesn't affect us. Uh, it, it it's definitely going to affect some other technologies and platforms out there. And I think, you know, surprisingly, in the last several months, we haven't heard a lot of people bringing it up. I think most people are getting ahead of it already, or anticipating it's going to happen. Your guess is as good as mine. It's going to happen this year. Uh, you know, we wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't happen at all uh, in the near future. But for the most part, it really doesn't affect us. Uh, and the other, the other point, uh, really, which goes back to uh, the impression data. I think there still is a lot of uh, companies out there, and maybe you see this a little bit more so in larger companies where attribution or the impression data is definitely key. And it's very important to any organization and getting their brand and message out there as well. Uh, but it's surprising to see how there's a lot of marketers that are still really want to measure the impact and show, uh, show how the value of this. And it's a very tough thing to do uh, unless you have a ton of traffic 
and a lot of data and you know there's a, a huge amount of like numbers that you can pour into it to really show kind of like hey you know this is definitely having a, a meaningful impact but for most companies you know because we support anywhere from like you know smbs all the way up to the mid-market and stuff and but you know unless you're like an enterprise in the top 10 percent of the enterprise companies you're not going to have that level of traffic or data to really have a meaningful understanding of what's working with impressions or not so i think most of this is you know our journey has been is just like helping people make that transition it's like you have to be more data driven you have to look at the true conversions and you know these people are coming through and they're clicking on this doing some type of conversion impressions are important you should be very well aware with that but like over time i think we are looking to get marketers to a point where they're going to be a little bit more data driven and uh in tune with what reality is as opposed to just taking the guess of what's happening out there and the impression side of the business yeah i think data uh, marketeers need to become a little bit more of data scientists than they were in the past um, because <laughs> so true. it's all about data you need to really know your numbers who's your perfect customer are there specific industries or niche that you work more with uh it's a great question though we cover uh it's very B2B or B2C, uh, it's a very big mix uh, between SaaS companies, e-commerce companies, brands that are selling things online, you know, small small companies that are doing that. And I think it's key for us is just when the ideal customer for us is a customer who's at least spending in a couple channels, you know, say Google, Facebook, uh, spending, starting to spend, you know, upwards of thousands of dollars a month and really starting to want to expand and grow their business, but, you know, don't really have a clarity of like, Hey, what's working better in one channel versus the other. And maybe they're starting to invest in other things such as podcast or email campaigns or anything else outside of that, where it's starting to get a little bit more complex. Uh, and as they're growing, they need to have something that's going to have a better central, uh, system. That's really going to help them better understand what's going out there. So hopefully that gives a little bit more of a clarity. I know I was a little bit all over the place, but our ICP could be, you know, uh, any, any kind of, uh, company that's looking at that, le those levels. Okay. How does your pricing structure work? Uh, so, uh, we are on the Shopify marketplace. Uh, so for Shopify customers, you can actually get started with a free plan if you wanted to up and it ranges up and uh, upwards if you wanted to have more of the features and benefits uh, it grows up into like $500 a month uh, uh, plus the percentage of ad spend so there's three different levels that we have out there and the biggest thing is just like getting started is one thing just to have some further clarity and we're always a big fan of like hey let's crawl walk run first before you get into it just start with understanding uh, you know even what's going on within uh, your Google or Facebook campaigns right bringing that into one central focal point and seeing if people are clicking through and converting and what that means to you. So many ways to get started. Uh, and, you know, we just looking to provide more transparency for people who are spending money out there in those different channels. Absolutely. Yeah. Before we get to the end of our coffee break today, David, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, I think there's more that's going to be coming. Uh, maybe by the time this podcast gets posted uh we do have a second app in the shopify store that's a connector to uh cdps and the first one is going to be with a segment cdp so we're excited about that that's going through the approval process right now very close and anticipating it's going to get released this week but by the time this podcast comes out uh, we're probably going to have that uh, app available as well for a company to get all of that data into their uh, CDP if they're a segment customer as well. Excellent. That's good news. Um, where can people find out more about you guys? Uh, definitely come to visit our LinkedIn page as well as the uh, website attributionapp.com. Uh, and, you know, feel free to connect directly with me. We'd love to have conversations. Uh, there's plenty of people that can come if you want to sign up for a demo and a conversation to see if we can help. Please come and visit the website uh, and the doors open. Okay. I will put the links in the show notes as always, and you just one click away. I think starting with the free plan or even having a demo directly with you makes absolutely sense if you want to find out 
where you're losing money in your marketing strategy and how you can optimize that with a better attribution model in the back. David, thanks so much for your time. I think that was a good entry into attribution and I hope a lot of people will follow up on that and make their business better. Great. Thank you, Klaus. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.